Okay, so let's talk now about reliable transmission. So we've talked about using um, cyclic redundancy checks and cyclic redundancy codes uh, to detect errors. Uh, but as we've also said, it's actually possible to make codes that can actually uh, correct at least some errors. Uh, however, typically, unless you're using uh, a link uh, where the errors are so frequent that you will need to correct errors in almost every frame, uh, these are generally not worth the, uh, the overhead. It's usually much cheaper uh, and more bandwidth efficient in the long run uh, to simply include a, a CRC uh, or similar that can detect errors so that you can uh, request retransmission uh, of whichever frame was faulty. Uh, so this is only happening you know, once in every thousand or once in every million times. Uh, then you know, the cost of the rate retransmission is very low uh, and you can get away with using say you know, a four byte CRC uh, on a one and a half kilobyte standard ethernet frame. Uh, to provide uh, robust error correction in the same environment would probably require using about 20% overhead. So you might have hundreds of bytes of overhead to have a decent error correcting code uh, on there, but it would only be needed, you know, one in a million times perhaps. Uh, and yet you're wasting 20% uh, of the bandwidth, or you would be uh, for a one in a million event. Uh, so in that regard, the CRCs uh, and other error uh, detecting codes tend to be more efficient. Uh, and so there's a couple of different ways that we can handle this retransmission approach uh, then. Uh, we can either have active acknowledgements where every time you send a frame, uh, the receiver has to acknowledge that they received it. Um, or you can use timeouts uh, to work out when one hasn't been received. Uh, so an acknowledgement. Uh, is the first case, uh, or an ACK for short, as you frequently hear them called, uh, is typically a, a very small control frame or it might be tacked onto uh, another frame carrying data in the other direction, depends on the, uh, uh, the link and the protocols that are involved. Uh, but often it's just a, uh, you know, a minimalistic frame that just says, I received frame such and such that was sent earlier. Uh, so if uh, an acknowledgement is received, then you know that the frame was received correctly. Um, the question is, what do you do if it wasn't received? Uh, in that case, if it hasn't been, re if you haven't had an acknowledgement in sufficient time, then you probably are going to assume that it didn't arrive correctly. Uh, there is also the chance actually that it arrived correctly, but the acknowledgement got uh, it, you know, had an error uh, on the way back, um, and we can't readily discriminate between those two, but that's fine. Again, these should be rare events uh, on typical things. So uh, if we haven't had that response within a certain uh, amount of time, we call that a timeout. And generally then that will be used together. So you have the acknowledgements and the timeouts together. We can do automatic repeat request or ARQ for short, where if you haven't had acknowledgement of the frame in a certain time frame, uh, then we can automatically uh, you know, send a, a repeat version of that frame. Um, another approach is actually just stop and wait. Send a frame, wait for the acknowledgement, uh, and as soon as you have the acknowledgement, you can start sending the next frame. If you don't have a frame, then you need to do the, uh, the ARQ uh, kind of approach. And if after a certain number of attempts uh, of sending uh, the frame again, you still don't receive it at the other, uh, you still haven't received the acknowledgement rather, uh, then you can kind of go, okay, right, this is just not going to get through, we'll give up uh, and move on anyway. So if we have a look uh, at an example of this, so uh, the sender uh, will send a frame, uh, the receiver gets it and generates the ACK. And the timeout is how much time we have uh, before we have to send it. So these are network timing diagrams um, time begins at the top and goes down. So we can kind of say earlier is at the top of the page and we talk about the data moving sideways between nodes uh, and coming back. And that these arrows are at a slant because it takes time for that to happen because you have the trans the data rate uh, limitation on the link. You have the propagation delay and all those things. So there is some time that that takes to come through. Um, so in case A, Everything is good. Uh, we've sent a frame, we've got the acknowledgement within time, totally fine. Um, if, however, uh, whoops, in case B down here below, we send the frame, but the frame has an error and never arrives as a result, uh, 
we don't get an acknowledgement within the timeout, uh, and then we can resend the frame, and this time it does get through, the acknowledgement comes through, and life is good. Um, also, if the acknowledgement gets lost, uh, as mentioned just before, as a, a possibility, uh, so the frame goes and arrives, the acknowledgement starts coming back, gets uh, has an error and gets lost on the way back. Again, we'll actually, at the end of the timeout, send the frame again. This time the acknowledgement comes through uh, and life is good. The receiver has to be able to deduplicate the uh, the duplicate uh, frame that's been received though. That's the only uh, trick there. Uh, the other option of, that can happen, of course, is that you send the frame and the acknowledgement actually gets sent, but takes longer than the timeout for some reason. Maybe there's queuing delays or something else going on. Uh, and then again, the sender will send a duplicate uh, and there'll be a duplicate act uh, that will come back. Uh, so here probably you want to increase the timeout to avoid this happening. But again, the receiver needs to be able to handle the duplicate frames and actually the sender needs to be able to handle the duplicate act uh, coming through to know uh, what's going on. So, uh, okay. So if we have the um, the delay and we do the, the retransmission, uh, we will get duplicate frames arriving as we said. So in case, uh, if we go back, uh, in case B and in case D, the receiver actually gets duplicate frames and it needs to deduplicate these. Um, so one approach to doing this is to have a sequence number. If we're doing stop and wait, we only have a, have one frame outstanding at a time. So we can use one bit uh, for the sequence number. So when the sender retransmits frame zero, the receiver knows whether it's still uh, the same frame or whether it's now moved on to the, um, uh, to the next frame. So if we look at that again as a network timing diagram, the sender sends frame zero to the receiver uh, the receiver receives it and sends an ACK to frame zero, after which the sender will send a frame one. Again, this is this one bit sequence ID that will get acknowledged and then it will send frame zero again because there's only uh, one bit, there's only two possible values. Um, so this can be a solution. A problem with this though is you can only have one frame outstanding at a time. So if the link is very fast but has a high round trip time, then we can have a very large bandwidth delay product. Uh, so for example, a one and a half megabit link uh, with a 45 millisecond round trip time, uh, we've got a delay bandwidth product of about eight kilobytes. But if each frame is only one kilobyte, then we can only have one kilobyte in transit at the time. We're actually wasting seven eighths of the link. Uh, so we end up actually only sending, uh, as the, the calculation here on the slide shows, um, so the bits that we can send in a frame, if it's one kilobyte, that's 8,192 bits divided by the time per frame, uh, 45 millisecond round trip time. So that, um, we can express that as 1,024 bytes times eight for the bits to get 8,192. Um, I just wanna make sure that so it's dividing by the frame rate, yes. Um, so divide by the frame rate gives us 182 kilobits per second. So it, as we said, this is about one eighth of the, link, the link's capacity because we're only using one eighth of the bandwidth delay product. So this means we need to be able to have more frames outstanding uh, if we want to be able to use the link to its full capacity. So this means we have multiple uh, frames being sent, multiple acknowledgements coming back, and then replacement frames being sent. So as soon as we receive an acknowledgement, um, we can start sending the next frame. Uh, and the idea is then that we have this sliding window of frames that we're sending at any point in time to try to keep the link fully occupied. Uh, so this is what's referred to as a sliding window protocol. There's a sliding window of uh, a set of uh, frames that can be sent. So instead of it just being one at a time, uh, we have a window over the list uh, as in a, a uh, that set that can be set at any point in time and that advances every time we get an acknowledgement. Uh, the window slides one position for every acknowledgement uh, that comes through. So now we have larger sequence numbers that are attached to each frame. Um, in theory, we could actually make it infinitely large. In practice, 32 or 64 bits is usually ample uh, for a sequence number. And so the sender needs to keep track of three things. 
One is how large a window it's allowed to have for unacknowledged frames. It needs to know the last acknowledgement received, so it knows where the window starts. And it needs to know the last frame sent so that it can keep marching through that window. Uh, so as we said, it's, we have a sliding window over the um, uh, the set of frames that can be sent. We have this kind of you know stream of frames that need to be sent. Uh, so the last acknowledgement received will be the um, uh, the earliest point in the stream. Um, well, sorry, the first frame that we want to send is always after the last acknowledge, uh, uh, acknowledgement received. It will always be the following frame. And then we'll keep sending them and keep track of where we've got up to in the last frame sent. And that whole distance from the frame straight after the LAR uh, to the, uh, the LFS has to be less than the sliding window size, or not greater than it, rather. It can be equal to it. Okay, and we'll continue that in the next video.